Hello and welcome to Yeyu Lab. Today we're going to talk about how to create APIs for your Autogen app. To kickstart this project, we'll first need to understand why we need to create an API service for Autogen. Directly using Panel or Streamlit for Autogen is excellent for prototyping or small projects, especially for a simple chatbot app, just like what I previously demonstrated. However, when a project steps from the demo phase to the production phase, a lot more demands are needed. For instance, customization of UI for more complex user experience requirements, integration with existing web pages, databases or workflows, as well as better scalability and security. An API server decouples the front end from the implementation of multi-agent call logic, hence providing the advantage that I mentioned earlier. The, the architecture of this Flexc API server communicates with both front-end applications and the Autogen engine. If you are new to Flexc, it's a Python web framework known for its lightweight and flexibility. It provides the requisite tools for us to build our web applications in a quick and easy way. To achieve the application by using Flexc, it receives user requests and data, for example, messages and agent configurations, and manages the autogen environment, including create agents, handle message queues, and orchestrates conversations, and send back the responses back to the front end. For example, the chat status, the agent outputs, the autogen call process controls the multi-agent interactions with our application, triggering uh, conversations, receiving agent outputs, and managing the group chat workflow. The final part is the front end application that will handle all user interactions, send requests to the API server and display responses. We will not cover much about this section in this video because I will only demonstrate with a simple React uh, example later. Um, it's open to you for various ideas, frameworks, and custom designs. Now let's walk through the code. For the start, make sure you have installed Autogen and Flexc uh, packages with the proper version. Flask course stands for cross origin requests, which is very essential for front end communication from external network. Now let's input these packages. Here, there are several key definitions we should prepare for um, this program. The flex test setup that initializes a flex app and configures calls for cross original requests. The queues, we have two queues. The print queue stores messages to be sent to the front end while the user queue receives the user input. These queues are the key enablers for asynchronous communication. The chat status helps track the current states of the Autogen uh, conversations, like chat ongoing, inputting, and ended. The Flex server should expose several API endpoints to manage conversations. So before any internal function implementation, we should design these endpoints in advance by using Flex Decorator app dot wrote. It's very easy to define endpoint with relevant processing methods. In this demonstration, we define the three most essential um, endpoints. Now let's first see the start chat request.
the start chat request is responsible for initializing an autogen group chat by accepting agent configurations, which is in the body of request, and also uh, queue initializations. Then the handler will create a thread by using Python's classic uh, threading method to handle the entire workflow of run chat, which we will introduce later, of autogen for asynchronous operations. Using asynchronous operations, the response and further API requests will not be stuck by autogen processing, and the direction of input and output is feasible as well. The next request is the send messages. The send message is responsible for receiving uh, user import messages during an ongoing uh, group chat. The third one is get message request. It's responsible for sending output messages from the group chat for the front end fetching. Here is the message flow that shows how the messages and requests interact. First, the post request start chat that trigger the autogen agents start creation and the chat start, the agent one speaks, agent two speaks, and all the agents will finish their speaks and their messages will be pushed to the print queue which can be fetched by the get request, the get message. And when any of these agent that require the human input, it will send the prompt to print queue as well. And when the user post a send message request to the user queue, that message will send back to one of the agent and the agent will handle the input to continue the workflow. Oh, here I should reverse the arrow. Okay. So far, we have implemented the external interface of this API server. It's time to create the internal process of logic for the entire multi-agent generation workflow. Let's start from the run chat function. The run chat function, which is executed in a separate thread, created in the request of start chat, is the heart of this API server's interaction with Autogen framework. For the data struct of the request, firstly, to properly feed the initialization process of an autogen generation workflow, we have to design a data structure that efficiently describe the configuration of agent and their tasks, including message, agents info, task info. Here is a basic configuration in JSON format, including only one assistant agent powered by OpenAI's GPT-4.0 model in the chat. You can add more agents to the agent info list to enable multi-agent conversation. Note that in this case, the user proxy agent is not configurable in the request, which is mainly in order to simplify the development tutorial. If you need to 
you can edit the user proxy in the function create uh, user proxy. So let's see the user proxy creation. Create user proxy. In, in this function, you must notice two special names, my conversable agent and print messages. These are initiatives for redirecting the input and output of AutoJane call from standard I.O., which is normally your command line, to your defined I.O., which in this case are the two message queues that connect to the APIs. Now let's define the class my conversable agent. Let's break down how this class works. The custom class, my conversible agent, is inherited from AutoJane's conversible agent class to create a custom agent that interacts with the API service. The overwriting methods of a get human input function is crucial for receiving user input from the front end via API request. Let's break down how this function works. First, it displays a message prompting the user for input and add these messages to the uh, print queue to be sent to the front end. And then it's waiting for input by entering a loop and continuously check the uh, user queue for the new messages from the front end. When a message is available in the user queue, it is retrieved and the status is updated to uh, chat ongoing from inputting and the message will be returned if effectively passing the user's input into the AutoGen conversation workflow. And also there is a timeout mechanism is implemented that 10 minutes in this case to gracefully end conversations if no user input is received. This is mainly for preventing memory leaks if the threading is stuck waiting for human input forever. An exit return will terminate the conversation and thread together in AutoGen framework. That's for user input. Let's see message output. It's implemented in uh, print messages. The print messages function acts as a message hub within AutoGen uh, conversation flow for all the agents, including user proxy and assistance. You should just the print messages to the user proxy register reply with reply function that is the callback function which will be triggered every time the agent receives the messages sent to itself. The implementation of print messages here is very simple which only puts the message content and the proper sender to the print queue. The function create group chat uses the received agent and task configuration to 
instantiate auto J agents using using the class like uh, GPT assistant agent or assistant agent or any other type of agent that defined by AutoJ based on the provided configuration and also register the reply function print messages to redirect the output messages when there are more than one agent including in the in the chat it will create an autogen group chat object to manage the multi agent conversation and set up a group chat manager to orchestrate uh, conversation workflows these are the basic processes in autogen for multi agent conversation creation now we have user proxy and we have the group chat created the last step of the run chat request handler is starting the group chat by inputting the user proxy manager and the user input message through uh, i think io run of initiate chat function and in the initiate chat it's very simple uh, just asynchronously start the conversation by calling the autogen's internal function a initiate chat and the manager as recipient either a single agent or a group chat manager orchestrates the conversation workflow now let's make the flask application start running by adding this code app.run on the bottom of all other code you can change the host or the port to any of your preferred hosting networks okay that's all for the code let's simply run Python Autogen API. If you see the output like this, it indicates that your Flex app for the Autogen API server is successfully running on the given uh, address and port. For your testing and a verification of the API service, you can either simply send a CUIL request string or design a mini web application by using some framework like React. At the end of this video, we will introduce the two verification methods in a real quick way because our original focus is on API service implementation, not front end design. You can type the CUIL uh, request string in your command line locally or remotely. Make sure the URL and put are what you defined in the flex code. And in the request body, we including uh, tell me a joke as message and agents info that including one agent personal assistant powered by gpt 40 and task info that including um, the settings like max messages with five and speak select mode as auto let's run this command the response is status chat started that means the auto j call process has been started with a new group chat conversation then we can move back to the command line that generate the AutoJ API service and you will see that the user proxy said tell me a joke and 
personal assistant has generated a joke. That is a very typical output from autogen call. In the case, the group chat starts normally. Let's see how to get the message by CURL command. The first message is this, that the chat status is importing and the message body is the first message provided by proxy, tell me a joke. Next one. This, this is the second message in the queue that generated by personal assistant of a joke. The third message in the queue is the system message that asks the user to provide further direction. Type approved or type exit to end the conversation. Let's see, is there any other messages in the queue? Okay, there's no other messages in the queue. Let's try to send the message. In the message, we only send exit to terminate the conversation. Okay, the response is message received. Let's get back to the autogen call processing. You can see that the chat is successfully ended. And let's get the message again. Okay, the status is ended and there's no more messages. Okay, so, so that is the entire workflow of a typical Autogen group chat. The ultimate usage of this API service is to allow developers to put it to their own front end web application freely. For this demonstration purpose, I designed a very mini app that's built with React, which provides a message output window and text input bar and a chat status indicator as well. So that's the generation of a joke. Let me exit it. After send the exit message, the chat status become ended. If you are interested in the code of this React uh, application, you can check out my GitHub repository for the source code. That's all for today. For the tutorial and the source code, you can find the link in the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Keep innovating, and I'll catch you in the next one.